In this short video, I'll show you how to calculate a forecast from a ARIMA model manually. Now, of course, most uh, software such as SPSS will automatically calculate forecasts, but should you want to calculate them yourself, then of course you can do it from the estimated equation. So here's the ARIMA 310 model that we, uh, we esti I estimated uh, in the uh, video on using SPSS for ARIMA modeling. Here were the estimated coefficients here. Now remember it we had to first difference in order to make the data stationarity so that's why it's a we have a one here of course. As you can see we had three autoregressive lags, no moving average. So it was an ARIMA 310. Now if you write down the, uh, the equation for this model this is what you get. Now notice here, this is important, that remember this model is in the first difference, not the actual values. So we don't just put yt, we have to put the first difference, yt minus yt minus 1. Then we have a constant, 0 0.030, and then the coefficient on the first lag is minus 0.342. Now notice that is the lag of the first difference. So what that means is that these two here get lagged by one period, so that becomes yt minus 1, and that becomes yt minus 2. So that's what I mean by the lag, the first lag here of the first difference. And therefore, obviously, that's going to be the second lag, where they're lagged two periods back, and the third lag here, and the associated coefficients. So you should be able to see the uh, how we write the model here. If, of course, the model uh, was done in, le in actual levels, they we didn't need a difference, then, of course, you would simply put yt and yt minus 1 and so on. But here it's in the first difference, so we must do that appropriately. Now, of course, we can use this equation to generate these forecasts here. These are the ones produced by the software, by SPSS. So let's look at how we might calculate that first forecast there for April 2012. Remember the data went up to March 2012, so the first forecast period was April 2012. It's monthly data. So let's use this equation here to calculate the forecast for April 2012. Now, this, now remember T, of course, means the current period. So the current period is, uh, here is April 2012, the period we're trying to forecast for. So that makes T minus 1 March 2012 and T minus 2 February 2012, T minus 3 January 2012, and T minus 4 December 2011. So those are the values we need to substitute in. Now here are the those final values from our data set, um, which you can check by looking at the data in SPSS. So I've substituted these in here. So yt minus 1, which of course is one period back, in other words, uh, March 2012 is that. Notice I've, I've, I've uh, put them just, just to simply four decimal places here, rather than all what we got by 8 here, just to keep the calculations a little simpler. So we've got yt minus 1, which is that, minus yt minus 2, well that's February, that's two periods back, so that's 91.072. Then we have minus 0.43 yt minus 2, which again is this one, minus t minus 3, that's three periods back, January 91.8842, and so on. You can see the other ones here. That's four periods back, which is December. And notice, of course, if we look at the equation that here on the left-hand side, we've got the first difference, yt minus yt minus 1. Well, I'm only trying to find yt. So that minus yt minus 1, of course, goes to the other side. It becomes plus. So we're adding on here March's figure. And that's yt minus 1. And you don't forget that. So now if you simply go through these, the calculation, so I need to work out these things in brackets here. That it comes to minus 1.2464. This one is minus 0.887. This one here is 0.8088. 
They are then multiplied by the appropriate coefficients. Here. So we've got 0 0.30. Now of course minus times minus is a plus. So that means plus that. 0 0.342 times 1.2464 is equal to this. Again, minus times a minus, so that's plus that. Those two multiply together. Plus this. And finally, don't forget the plus 89.7608. And if you work this out with your calculator, this is what you get. 91.7839782. Now if you compare that with the forecast from SPSS, it's not quite the same. But that's because SPSS will have used the full um, eight decimal places rather than the four I use. But as you can see, it's essentially the same. 90, about 91.78, which is what I've got here. So that's how we can calculate that first forecast. Now if we wanted the second one, of course, then of course T now becomes May. So T minus 1 becomes April, T minus 2 becomes uh, March, and so on. And notice that when you get past the first forecast period, one of the values you're going to have to use, uh, if we want May, is I'm going to use to April, which of course is itself a forecast. So these later forecasts here are actually using the previous forecasts for uh, to work them out, which in a sense explains why there's less certainty with these later forecasts, and hence why this prediction interval here around the forecast gets wider as you go further out into the future. So that shows you how you can calculate uh, forecasts manually.